crazy rules Mafia members have had to follow. Years ago, Italian police arrested Salvatore Lo Piccolo, the suspected head of the Sicilian Mafia. They found a list of 10 commandments that seemed to be a guide for the behavior of Mafia members. In this video, I'll explain some of the most bizarre rules found in this document, as well as others not found here that the Mafia are known to adhere to. The Mafia only communicates by word of mouth. For decades, it has been an unwritten rule that the Mafia only communicates by word of mouth. According to Enrico Bellavia, a Palermo-based journalist, they all know the rules, and for generations, the Mafia has always avoided communicating other than by word of mouth, meaning a document outright listing commandments would be a violation of those old laws. Ironically, that would make Lo Piccolo's document a violation of said rules. However, it's speculated that Lo Piccolo's list may have been intended in part to rein in some of the more flamboyant, younger mafia generations who drive flashy cars and show off their wealth and power. As you can imagine, attracting that kind of attention isn't great for business. The mafia takes feuds very seriously. When there's a blood feud between two families or clans, also known as a vendetta, the responsibility to maintain the vendetta usually falls on the closest male relative to whoever has been killed or wronged. But other members of the family may take the mantle as well. A vendetta usually begins when one family believes itself to have been attacked, insulted, or wronged by another, often leading to a long-running cycle of retaliatory violence. Sometimes, the violence is generational, as continuous provocation and retaliation make it almost impossible to end the vendetta peacefully. Vendettas between different mafia clans often start over the killing, dishonoring, or insulting of someone. Their relatives declare a vendetta and seek revenge by killing or otherwise punishing the culprits and their relatives. It's very easy to find yourself in the middle of a vendetta the law has no power to stop. Only one group can hope to rein in the senseless violence, and they are known as the Commission. The Commission's word is law. If you have thought for a second that Mafia families operate without any sort of structure, then you need to go back and brush up on your Godfather movies. To prevent the kind of violence you see on the street amongst rival gangs, Mafia families in the United States established what's known as the Commission. The governing body of the Italian-American Mafia was formed in 1931 by Charles Lucky Luciano, following the Castellamarese War, a bloody power struggle for control in New York City in 1930. The commission replaced the title of Capo di Tutti Capi, Boss of All Bosses, with a ruling committee with a much less amazing name. It consisted of the bosses of the five families of New York City, the bosses of the Chicago outfit, and the leaders of other smaller families. The purpose of the commission was to oversee all mafia activities in the United States and mediate conflicts among families. To avoid outright murder in the streets, all mafia-related businesses and actions have to be approved by the commission, which oversees all activities. Even hardened criminals have bureaucracies. Their word is law, and they've been pretty effective at stopping wars and petty feuds amongst what would otherwise be disorganized gangs of criminals. That's not to say they do not allow bloodshed every now and then, especially when it comes to vendettas. Sometimes these crime families simply can't get along and overcome issues, so they must retaliate. If these vendettas are left unchecked, it can quickly turn into a war. That's where the commission steps in. No, they aren't here to stop the murders. That would be silly. They just approve certain retaliation to avoid starting a larger conflict. The Mafia doesn't welcome everyone. It might surprise you to find out that this organized crime organization filled with hardened murderers isn't very inclusive. If you wanted to be a full member of the Mafia, or a made man, for whatever reason, you needed to pass the test of having Italian ancestors. Although, you can be an associate of the Mafia if you're lacking that Italian blood. If by your sheer hard work you manage to pass the first test of being Italian, there's more to be proven before you can become a made man. There are more tests, Prospects also have to prove loyalty, obedience, courage, and bravery, along with a bunch of other qualities you wouldn't typically associate with hardened criminals. Salvatore Lo Piccolo even made a list of people who can't be part of the Mafia. Anyone who has a close relative in the police, anyone with a two-timing relative in the family, anyone who behaves badly and doesn't hold to moral values. If you somehow passed all the tests, the initial ritual isn't for the faint of heart either. It involves oaths, blood, and an agreement to pledge your life to the Mafia and its rules. The first known account of the Mafia initiation ceremony dates all the way back to 1877 in Sicily. For the ritual, inductees would be led into the presence of other members and presented by a member. The association is explained, then his finger is pricked with a needle by the officiating member. A few drops of blood are spilled on a card bearing the likeness of a saint. The card is then set on fire and rapidly passed around. While this is happening, the inductee takes an oath of loyalty to the Mafia family. This is a pretty elaborate ritual that signifies a new member has been chosen to be responsible for their brothers and shield them. 
If you don't want to pledge your life to an organization, or you're too scared of needles to go on with the ceremony, well, suffice to say, the Mafia isn't exactly the place for you. The Mafia dictates the lives of its members. Pledging fealty to a Mafia family means that they get to determine what you do with your friends, your family, and even your free time. Salvatore Lopicolo wrote a few instructions specifying exactly how he wanted his men to behave. When it came to treating their wives as well, he wrote, Never look at the wives of your friends. Wives must be treated with respect, which is pretty reasonable, basic decency even. But then he added, Always being available for Cosa Nostra is a duty, even if your wife is about to give birth pretty easy to see where your loyalties are meant to lie. He added rules meant to make a group of murderous criminals somewhat resemble honest, respectable members of society. Rules like, don't go to pubs and clubs. Appointments must absolutely be respected. Money cannot be appropriated if it belongs to others or to other families. And finally, when asked for any information, the answer must be the truth. If I was going to hazard a guess, I'm pretty sure the last one doesn't apply to the police. The Mafia goes to great lengths to preserve secrecy. Being a mafioso means that you simply can't go around telling people of your station. That's an easy way to end up dead or in prison. Unsurprisingly, there are a bunch of rules to keep things clandestine. For one, mafioso can only be introduced to each other by a third party to keep the organization safe from imposters. One mafia member can't just simply approach another member and introduce himself. That would be too easy and potentially dangerous. He must find a third member whom they both know to make the connection. This way, the third person vouches that they are loyal members and not some undercover cop, for example. Speaking of which, there are rules about how members associate with police officers as well. It's exactly the kind of rule you'd expect. Members are just straight out forbidden from associating with members of the police, for very obvious reasons. Some Mafia families have written rules specifically for the circumstance. It's flat out stated, never be seen with cops. A pretty superfluous rule, I might add. No mafioso would willingly want to be taken as a snitch after all. Avoiding the cops is already a natural instinct, doubly so if you're a mafioso. Omerta aka the Code of Silence or the Code of Honor. Omerta is one of the highest regulations among mafioso. Violating the Omerta is punishable by death. Omerta is an extreme form of loyalty and solidarity in the face of authority. According to the Code, it is deeply demeaning and shameful to betray even one's deadliest enemy to the authorities. As you can imagine, this has led to a bunch of unsolved mafia crimes. The legendary Omerta has found its place in many criminal organizations. This code obliges all members of the mafia, even members of the general public, not to cooperate with the authorities. After all, snitches get stitches. The code is so strict that if a mafioso facing charges for a crime chooses to defend himself by implying that someone else in the organization did it, he has broken the code. Hence, if he finds himself at the end of an interrogation table, all he can do is accept his punishment and even serve time if it comes to it. Heaven help him if he chooses to snitch. There is a special designation for members who choose to collaborate with public prosecutors by testifying against their family members, usually hoping to get reduced sentences. They are called Bendito. Tommaso Buscetta was the first Sicilian mobster to break the code of silence. He aided in the convictions of hundreds of mafiosi. Although he was lucky enough to survive and live the rest of his life in witness protection, it doesn't always come with a happy ending. Retaliation is permitted against the Bendito, and of course, their punishment is always death. Although the snitch might be under witness protection, the organization puts extreme amounts of effort to track him down and kill him. You simply must not break Omerta. If you enjoyed this video, do click on a video on the screen. It's plenty insightful, just like this one. See you there.